So you're saying 300 plus for the BJP alone, which means that the NDA, of course, has a very, very, very comfortable uh, you know, margin of that. Which, to your mind, would be the interesting states that we should look for in the next three to four months, which might have a bearing on that? I mean, the opposition, I guess, would be eyeing what? Karnataka, West Bengal, Bihar, maybe Maharashtra, to bring the BJP's number down. BJP may be hoping that the number will go up in Uttar Pradesh. Would that be a fair summary? That's a fair summary. In fact, I would only keep an eye on three, Vikram, um, and that is West Bengal, Bihar, and Maharashtra. Uh, Karnataka, yes, there is an interesting state because Congress had won that, but our data very clearly shows that uh, uh, even when the BJP lost the assembly election, the votes, uh, Lok Sabha voting intent question at that point of time in our numbers were way higher for the BJP than the Congress. And understanding very clearly that BJP had, you know, approached JDS, taken them into the NDA fold, and they are coming with almost like 10% plus vocal a solid vote bank in the southern Karnataka. So uh, I don't see uh, much uh, change as such uh, in, in Karnataka. What do you think the dynamics in those are and, and Uttar Pradesh? I mean, do you think... BJP could come down significantly in those three states, or would it be only five, ten seats, which then pretty much wouldn't make much of a difference one way or the other? Well, BJP's seat share in UP will only go up from here because last time in the Mahagat Bandhan, they lost few seats, that's fine. But uh, now, unless Mayawati also unites Congress and SP and RLD together, that's a different scenario. Otherwise, Mayawati contesting separately will only uh, end up in BJP increasing at least 10 seats in Uttar Pradesh. But as far as Bihar and uh, West Bengal and Maharashtra are concerned, all three states are having a different kind of dynamics. In West Bengal, it is certainly Mamta Banerjee versus the BJP. Mamta Banerjee is still very popular. She holds the ground over there. It depends on how many seats, if at all, they, she goes into an alliance with the Congress and the left. She leaves it for them, and will that be uh, triggering another kind of a polarization in anti mamta votes, and which uh, also go to the Congress and the left? That is number one. Number two, Bihar is very, very interesting because Nitish Kumar, which who is arguably the face of the opposition, wanted to be the face of the opposition, but in our data, that is one person whose popularity ratings have crashed like anything in the last couple of years. You know, so uh, I don't really see JDU scoring big time, depending on how many seats they contest. Um, uh, Lalu Prasadji said that they will be contesting 17 each and, you know, leaving the rest for the alliance partners. But honestly speaking, looking as on today, I would be highly surprised if JD United, Janta Dal United actually opens up the account. In, 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 in parliament in that way. The things are so bad for him. Yes, Tejasvi Yadav remains very, very popular. Lalu Yadav remains very popular. So, the way the Bihar is behaving, it is pro-Tejasvi, anti-Nitish, BJP might reap benefit in some places, might get trashed in some other. So, that's a contest to watch out for in Bihar. And as far as Maharashtra is concerned, uh, God knows. Brahma ko bhi pata ki abhi kya ho raha hai. Reason being, how can a voter decide who is going to vote for when we don't know which faction is where, which kind of leader is where, which kind yeah. of seats are going to be allocated, and who is going to contest against whom we do not know? 